In the midst of the Great Depression, as New York City buzzed with the energy of resilience and the stark contrast of immense wealth, a unique request arrived at the desk of the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation. It wasn't from the military or an airline, but from a group of wealthy Wall Street businessmen. Their ask? Nothing less than a custom-built flying yacht that could whisk them over the gridlocked city streets and land them smoothly on the East River in Manhattan. In a time when most were focused on survival, these businessmen were envisioning a future where the sky was not a limit but a gateway. An era where the convenience of air travel was not just for crossing continents, but for daily commuting. This audacious vision led to the birth of an aviation legend. This is the story of the Grumman G-21 Goose. The Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation, founded in 1929, is a titan in the world of aviation. Renowned by their innovative designs, Grumman specialized on the float planes and naval fighters, with their famous Ducks and F-Series fighters. But story of G-21 revolves in a completely different path. The aircraft was initially developed in response to a request from a group of wealthy businessmen living on Long Island, New York, in the late 1930s. Interesting fact is that one of the primary figure among these businessmen was Henry Morgan, a successful Wall Street stockbroker by time, and a member of the Morgans of J.P. Morgan fame. These gentlemen living in Long Island were seeking a more efficient way to commute to the city, specifically Manhattan. The idea was to have an aircraft that could take off from the waterways near their homes and land on the East River in Manhattan, thus avoiding traffic and significantly reducing their commute time. As a result, they approached the Grumman to design a plane that could meet these unique requirements, small yet comfortable amphibious airplane. When the request for a flying yacht landed at Grumman, the engineering team knew they had a unique challenge on their hands. Grumman, at that time known for their duck, and even an already upgraded version of it, had the expertise in designing aircraft that could handle sea operations. But a luxury aircraft for private use was a new territory for them. Not ones to back down from a challenge, the Grumman engineers rolled up their sleeves and got to work. The task was to build an aircraft capable of landing on water and land, be comfortable and stylish. And what made the task even more challenging, this plane should be able to carry at least six passengers, which was a completely new task for Grumman, as all their previous planes had a maximum capacity of three. Backed by the wealthy gentlemen, Grumman had freedom to explore and research new fields. The G-21 received a high mounted wing, and what's important, just one wing, because all the previous Grumman's planes were in fact biplanes. Fuselage was almost all aluminum, light, durable, and rust resistant. Under its wings, or to be precise, right above them, the Goose was powered by twin Pratt and Whitney R980514 engines. These were nine cylinder, air cooled radial engines, each capable of delivering 450 horsepower. This power allowed the Goose to reach speeds of up to 200 miles, or approximately 323 kilometers per hour. When it came to fuel, the Goose had a capacity of 220 gallons, or approximately 833 liters. At a typical fuel burn rate of 50 gallons per hour, this gave the Goose an endurance of over four hours, covering around 700 miles. But it's not fair to say that Grumman's previous projects didn't influence the Goose. One of the distinct features of the G-21 was its landing gear that was initially engineered for ducks, it fitted the goose perfectly. The wheels were extended by a hand crank and retracted by an electric motor. When fully retracted, the wheels were completely enclosed within the fuselage, helping to maintain the aerodynamic shape of the aircraft and eliminating any drag that could be caused by the wheels during flight or water operations. Another thing Grumman did for the first time was designing a cabin with a comfort level higher than zero. Remember, all of their previous planes were strictly military-grade aircraft, where performance is the ultimate key. The Goose, however, was designed from the start with luxury in mind. It was a flying yacht meant to be used by wealthy people for their personal travel. So a high level of comfort and luxury was a key requirement. The spacious seating, high-quality interior finishes, large windows, and additional amenities were all quite exceptional for the time. It could accommodate up to seven passengers in addition to the pilot. The seating was plush and comfortable, designed for longer journeys. The passenger cabin was typically set up in a club seating arrangement, 
allowing for easy conversation during the flight. The interior was often finished with high-quality materials for a luxurious feel. This typically included polished wood trims, leather seats, and sometimes even carpeting. It was more like the interior of a high-end car than a typical aircraft of the time. Large windows were a key feature of the Goose, allowing passengers to enjoy panoramic views during their flight. This not only added to the flying experience, but also filled the cabin with natural light, enhancing the sense of spaciousness. Depending on the customization, the Goose could also include additional amenities for the comfort of its passengers. These might include a refreshment center, a lavatory, and sometimes even a sleeping berth for longer journeys. In fact, the level of luxury offered by the Goose could be more accurately compared to the private rail cars of the era or the luxury automobiles used by the wealthy. It was this focus on comfort and style, combined with its unique amphibious capabilities, that set the Goose apart from other aircraft of its time. But the timing of this story definitely wasn't perfect. The first G21 took to the skies in 1937, just as the world was on the brink of World War II. What started as a luxury flying yacht would soon find itself serving in various military roles around the world. In 1938, the Royal Canadian Air Force was the first military service to recognize the abilities of the Goose when it ordered one in June of that year, followed soon by orders from the US Army and Navy, as well as the Peruvian Air Force and the Portuguese Navy. During World War II, the Army was the first to order a substantial quantity, operating 26 as OA-9s and OA-13s. The US Navy and Coast Guard operated 169 Gooses, designated as JRFs in utility, transport, and anti-submarine duty. In total, the Air Forces and Navies of 11 nations have flown the Goose. France flew at least 15 in combat in Indochina, where several JRFs were armed with bombs and machine guns. A total of 345 G21s were produced by October 1945, when production ended. While most of the geese were quickly phased out of military service after World War II, the Goose renewed its career as an airliner in earnest. Uniquely adapted for travel in virtually any environment, the Goose saw widespread service with small airlines in the Caribbean, California, and Alaska. Another honorable mention must go to McKinnon Enterprises for their G21C and further upgrades to D, then E, and G models. They significantly upgraded the aircraft, creating a variant that offers even more performance and capabilities. The most prominent change was the replacement of the original Pratt and Whitney radial engines with more modern and powerful turboprop engines, such as the PT-6A. This substantial increase in power resulted in improved performance across the board for the Super Goose. There was even a variant of the four-engine this plane. For over 50 years, the rugged and versatile G21 has performed its daily tasks, providing much service. Dozens of geese still fly today, carrying passengers and freight throughout the world. Thanks so much for watching this video, hope you like it, and I'll see you in the next one.